Welcome to Get Good episode number one. In this series, over the next 10 weeks, I'll be teaching you various different things about Git from just getting started to actually fairly advanced things. So even those that believe they are somewhat well versed in Git may still find some value in this series. In this particular video, we'll be learning you know, the very bare basics of Git, how to get started with it, how to initialize and how to clone repositories. I'll be assuming that you already have Git installed, although if you don't, it's not that difficult. You can do say brew install Git if you're on Mac OS. If you're on Linux, it might come pre-installed already. So you could do sudo apt or whatever your package manager is, Git. On Windows, you'll need to download Git for Windows from your browser. Even though I'm gonna be doing everything in Visual Studio Code, it's just a convenient environment to use. We will be doing everything in the command line itself. Uh, so we're gonna stick as close to core Git as possible. So you don't need to be using VS Code. You don't even need to be using an editor at all. If you don't want to, you just need to have a terminal open and you're ready to go. I'm just using VS Code because we, we are gonna be working with files and stuff and it's just a convenient interface and it's a bit pretty as well. So that's what we're doing that. Uh, but to actually create a repository for the first time, uh, well, actually, first, I should show you that I have an upstream repository already created. This is not a GitHub tutorial, so I'm not going to be showing how to do this. But I've already created one uh, called Git Good. I've also made it private just so, you know, people don't get spoilers. Uh, but this is what you see when you create a blank repo in GitHub. And it gives you a few instructions down there that are a bit spoilery. We're going to be covering those in future videos. But to actually instantiate our repository all we need to do is git init and there you go you now have a repository in the current directory as you can see i was already in the directory i wanted to be in uh, and now we have well on my terminal at least we have this git goods uh, folder down here and it says we are on branch main not all terminal interfaces will give you this inf uh, this much information i'm using starship for those that are curious i made a video on that before uh, but this is telling us we're on branch main your branch might be called master. I'll be showing you how to rename branches in a future video, but it doesn't really matter uh, a great deal. So now that we've created our repository, we might want to add a few files to it. And we could just do that using the standard interface. So we're going to create a readme.md and I'm just going to set the title just to get good for now. You can put whatever you want in this readme. It doesn't really matter. Another good file to have would be something like a license. This could be, you know, whatever license you want. There are plenty of licenses to um, use. I'm not going to talk about licenses here because that is very much a complex topic in itself. Uh, but I am going to, I'm just looking it up now because I realize I haven't actually got it on screen yet. I'm going to be using the BSD three clause license here. It's the license I normally use for things. It's very simple, uh, very permissive. And if I just bring that up here, there we go. I was just trying to find a repo that I had it in already. Uh, so you can set this to your current year, so like 2024. Uh, this present thing is, is optional, but again, I'm starting to talk about licenses now. Uh, but you can put in whatever license you want. It's often a good thing to have a license in here, and it would be this license file all in uppercase. And then you'd also additionally want to have a dot editor config. Uh, now these two files are you know, somewhat obvious in their purpose. This editor config is a little bit um, more, I guess, abstract or like a, not quite as obvious as to what its in, intended purpose is. But this file will tell uh, the upstream Git repository, whether that be you know, GitHub or GitLab, how to render your files. And I'm just gonna copy paste my normal config in here. You can see normally we have, so I have one that says root equals true. And this is something that applies for all files. So the character set is UTF-8. End of line is LF. Insert file new, uh, new line equals true and trim trailing white space equals true. So this just means that, you know, additional lines of white space won't be uh, included. Insert file new line is sort of a standard. So you can see VS code has input a, a blank line 16, even though, you know, there isn't anything on it. This is just a bit of a standard and this just makes sure that um, you know, that standard is respected. We also have a special one for .py files. So where the indent size equals four and the indent style equals space. I found that if you set the indent size or if you leave the indent size to the default, it defaults to eight, 
which is a bit strange. So this, you know, uh, makes sure that it's for. And RST as well, this is just a documentation format that I don't really use anymore. Um, so I could probably actually get rid of that out of my config, but I just have the same things in there. Uh, you can set up configs for any type of file. So if you're working with C files, you might want to do something with that. If you're working with Rust files, you might want to do something with that, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, this is just where you tell your upstream repository what you want to do with it. Of course, all these three files are you know, completely optional. You don't have to have these files in the repository. I'm just showing you them because they are generally good boilerplate files to have. Depending on your language that you're using, there are other boilerplate things you'd want to do as well. So if you were doing you know, Python project, you might want to have a pyproject.toml, for example. Uh, but we're not doing stuff with Python this time around. Uh, so we're fine. Uh, so the next thing we might want to do is we, we might want to connect our local repository to the remote one. And we could do this using the git remote command. So we could do git remote add origin. And then I am going to use just a HTTP link <laughs> because it's a bit easier. Uh, but you can use SSH as well. Uh, so we could do github.com slash and then Cabra slash git good so this is where the repository is located if we come back over here you can see this is the url here that the repository is uh, so a remote is an upstream branch or you know something on github or gitlab would be considered the remote you can add a remote using the add command you can add as many remotes as you want origin is the name of our remote origin as far as i can tell seems to be somewhat of a standard and this just means, you know, the the origin remote. If you were to clone something, the remote would be set automatically for you. And that would actually use origin as its name, which I imagine is where it got it from. And then you can just pass the URL there, hit enter, and there you go. It's set up. We get this little icon to say that there's you know, stuff on a local branch that isn't on the remote. If you wanted to do SSH, I'm not going to show the full SSH setup. But if you do have an SSH setup, you can do... Um, say remote add origin and then something like github colon uh, cabra slash git good and you'll notice that remotes are case insensitive so this will still work even with a lowercase c as it did with an uppercase c uh, but we don't really need to worry about that right now we're not actually going to be committing any files to this remote as that is a topic for next video but I did want to talk about cloning while we were here because, you know, this is another way that you can create an existing repository. Um, so you can use git clone and this works the same. So you can either provide the URL or you can provide an SSH uh, link. So I, you know, I have one called uh, GitHub and we're going to clone down uh, the one that I always use on this channel, which is a project called Analytics. You'll get this cloning here and then you'll see this folder up here uh, with all these files in that are part of the analytics repository and we brought everything down so you have all these things from the remote and then you know, all this all this progress and whatever if we were to actually go into here we could see that this is a different uh, git repository and we can actually you know uh, get the yeah that's the one uh, get url origin uh, the URL of our origin remote. So you can see it's created an origin for us, which is where the origin name comes from. And then you get that here. And then you can work on it to your heart's content. That's all for this video. Before I go, I want to say an amazing thank you to all my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mozart Washerman III for being so generous. On Monday, we'll be talking about creating virtual environments in Python 3.12. Have a next Friday will be the next episode of this series. And we'll be talking about staging changes for committing talking about actually committing those changes. We'll be talking about tagging commits as well as a little bit of a bonus on the end. So I'll see you for that.